Hey, what's this? A whiteboard. We're getting fancy now. Hey, so yeah, we are getting a little bit more fancy. I figured it's time for me to step up my illustrations. Uh, almost on a daily, I get somebody's going to come along, if not multiple people, and send me an email, a question. Um, somehow they're going to ask me something that they just need some help. And it's very hard to send an illustration and people want to ask me. And I don't honestly have time to go on Corel Draw and create all these things. And you don't want to see my drawings when I try to hold a mouse and draw a line straight with bit paint. It looks bad. So, yes, I did, I did decide to finally invest into a nice big whiteboard such as this. And um, to no surprise, I have been getting flooded with email technical questions as usual. Um, and I had a couple people and I, and I said, hey, you know what, instead of me just doing a regular text uh, reply, let me just reply to them on my whiteboard to show them their answer as well as share with you and the world so everybody else who has this problem can follow along and do it for their own selves when they have this, this situation. So today's question is from a guy named Mahir. He's in uh, Colorado. Um, and what he's saying is he's got a 350ZX and he wants to wire up his, um, what do we got? I don't know if you mentioned what brand it was, but it's an in-dash DVD receiver. Um, and he wants to have his camera on and he wants to have access to watch the camera image while he's in motion or anytime he chooses to because typically when you have a rear, rear view camera connected in, in line with one of these DVD receivers you have to engage reverse gear to activate 12 volts to the camera to send the, the uh, video feed onto the screen of, of the stereo. So if you're doing it and you wanted to see the video override for whatever reason, if you're watching a trailer, if you have a, you know, if you're towing something, if you just want to see um, when you're trying to hook up your hitch, whatever the story is, you don't have to explain it to me. You know, hey, I'm 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 just a how-to guy. It's a good idea. I actually do it in my own vehicle. There's a couple different ways that you can attack this. Um, so what I've done is I've already laid out the basic components of this job. So the first thing is your tailgate, of course. Your, your uh, camera, which we're just going to say is a single camera with a red and a black wire for power and ground. This here is going to be the RCA or the video. Which I'll lay out RCA slash video signal. There's your head unit. Now I've also got a couple of uh, images of a diode, which is to the best of my drawing ability laid out. So if you're not familiar with diodes, this is definitely going to be something that's going to come into play. Now, this guy is um, considering adding a double pole, single throw switch or something to that effect. That's a good idea. Um, again, I don't want to get too complicated in this video. I want to keep it really simple and dumb it down just for anybody who wants to do this the simple way. I'm not here to make your life complicated. The way that I would do this, the way I've always done it in all my years, having a stereo shopping for myself, even if I was going to go out to the parking lot and do this very same thing to that car I'm looking at, this is the way I'm going to do it. This is the way I recommend you do it. It's with the least amount of components, it's with the least amount of effort, and by far the most amount of reliability, and both are important. Okay, So basic electrical is obviously a necessity here, as well as a diode. But if you're not familiar with diodes, I'm going to bring it up to speed very quickly. If you need to buy a diode, make sure you buy it here, because that is our website. Make sure you go here. If you don't buy it here, then this whole tutorial was void. Okay, so here's your camera. There's your head unit. Like I said, your camera's going to have two outputs. You're going to have one which is red, which we all know is positive 12 volts, and we have a black, which is your negative ground. In this video, you're going to take that black and you're going to connect that to the chassis. Preferably in closest proximity to the camera as possible on a factory bolt is the best choice. If you can't, a self-tapping screw with a locking wash or something like that, it's good enough. So there's your power wire, your tail light. Now on your tail light, there's only one wire on this tail light that we need to focus on. And that one wire is this one. This is the reverse output lead wire. If you don't know what the wire is on, on your car, a couple ways you can go about doing that, of course, is one is to test it, which is the right way to do it. Um, I would expect that you have a meter or a test light, something like that. If not, there's other videos that I have. Just, just go on my channel and type in free wire info. I have a whole resource for that. We can get all the information on your car and any car for free. Or you can just Google it or do the testing. This wire here is going to always be resting at ground and it's going to always switch to 12 volts 
when engaged. So when you put your car in reverse gear, this wire is going to get 12 volt positive. Now, here's the thing. You're going to have your stereo, which is looking for a reverse signal input. You got your camera, which wants to send out power, which is going to turn on that camera. I mean, to, your, your red wire is going to be connected to uh, the reverse, like so, all three in one spot, because your tail light is turning the receiver on to tell it, and it's also going to activate power back to the camera, creating that and making your image on your screen. Okay. Now here's the problem. If you wanted to have a switch, this is just a single pulse switch, in and out. When the switch is off, it rests it open. Now if you had this one, and you connected this to a constant 12 volts, or accessory, whatever the case is, it doesn't really matter, and you wanted to switch that on to the circuit turning your camera on, it will do that exact thing. It will turn your camera on, it will put the image on your screen, but what happens is your light in the back of your car goes on. Here's the problem. Definitely a problem. Okay, so let's see what I've done here. All I've done is I left my switch in line, single pole switch, 12 volts coming into one side of the switch. Now you got power coming out when the switch is closed. It's going into a diode. Now the power is going into the diode with the banded cathode side towards the reverse input wire on the head unit. Same thing goes for the other diode. They're both going that way with the banded stripe facing the stereo so that way power will come in through the anode, go into the input, and, it, and of course it will block any positive energy coming back so it will never backfeed either direction because this is called a, diode, a double diode situation. So whenever you have one diode like this, Say we want to isolate any ground from coming into the, into the uh, circuit. Ground will pass only on the cathode side. Cathode can go. That's, that's the way I was taught from electrical back in the days. And then you're going to have your anode. So electrical positive energy will always go in this, in this flow of, of directionality. Ground cannot go any other way. So that way there's a single, di single diode situation. You can take another diode or as many diodes as you want, really. And you can have as many positive trigger sources as you'd like, all going into this one common point to wherever it may be. In this case, it's here. It's a reverse lead input on that stereo receiver, so that way it's going to allow the positive energy to only go in this one direction and never allow the backflow in any one of the other ones. Now, the only thing is this, you're using a reverse taillight circuit, and if you watch most of my videos, I've showed you <clears throat> very simply how you can test amperage. Now, a taillight, in my opinion, probably is about, depending on the cars, there's so many, you know, you have you know, halogens, LEDs, all this crazy stuff now. Let's just say, for the sake of it, it's three amps, okay? Now, on your, on your diodes, you have different ones that you can purchase that we, as a company, sell. We sell one amp, we sell three amp, 5 amp, 6 amps, and 10 amp diodes. Okay, So if you have a light that's halogen is running, say, 3, 3 amps, obviously you're not going to use a 1 amp. 3 is even cutting too close because diodes do get hot. You don't want to have that problem. Always overkill it. If you're using 3 amps, my suggestion is a bare minimum is to add 30% more tolerance. So go for, this, go for the 5, preferably the 6 amp. Diodes are very cheap. Don't be cheap, do it the right way, put the diode in there, put the right value of the diode in there and be done with it and never see it again. And that's really all there is to it. So if you need to do this job, like my friend here, ask me how it's done, this is the way to do it. There's no need to get complicated relays, sim single pole, double throw, quadruple throw, switches and all this other nonsense. Keep it simple, get yourself some diodes, of course buy it from me because you know I got the best deals and this is what I do. So that's how you do it. Do this and you will be happy.